Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the Irish Therapy Conference 2025. And today we are talking to Turan Mirza. Turan, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Great to be speaking with you. Absolutely. Welcome to Irish Open Therapy Conference 2025. You nearly made it last year. Nearly, or this year, yeah. I should say. Oh, that, that, that was a story and a half. I actually heard about the conference, contacted, said, I need to speak, I need to speak. And we got on Zoom. And yeah. As soon as you said the date, I went, mm, what's happening then? Oh, <laughs> my son's wedding. You kind of had to go to that one, didn't I had you? To, I had to cut my prayer. <laughs> Hypnosis is very important to me, but uh, that's, the, that's the one thing. Yeah, no, no, no. So no, I've told absolutely. everybody. No, no weddings. No <laughs> no There's nothing else organised for the fifth and sixth of April. Nothing. Exactly. Nothing Dublin. stands by this year. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm really looking forward to your to your talk, and I've seen you talk in London before, and so I'm really looking forward to your talk. It's going to be fascinating. Exactly. And but before we get into that, because it's a really fascinating topic, and I think you're the only you are the only person doing it in Dublin this year, and there is a lot of interest in it. But before we do that, who is Taran Mirza? Who's Taran Musa? Well, my name's Taran Musa, as as, as as the name suggests. Um, so the name's Turkish, but I was born and bred. My father's Turkish, but uh, he came over to Northern Ireland and settled down. Um, my, my good old Irish mother dragged him back to meet the parents, and, and he stayed. So I'm born and bred in Northern Ireland, so I'm still living here. Um, little place, Ballandary Upper, just outside Lisburn, uh, Crumlin, Glen Avey direction, if anybody knows the map. And uh, yes, for, for 27 years, I was a, a little computer nerd, sat behind the computer writing software. Um, I, was, I was promoted into being a software manager and a, and a director of engineering for a technology company. And that was my life. And then I fell in love with this hypnosis stuff. And I always tell people, you know, the background is I used to do what I call, oh, I should have had a prop here. I should have had a prop. Uh, I'll use this little memory card. I used to do, you know, oh, Where'd that memory card come from? Oh, you know, I used, where's that coin come from for the kids? What I call silly dad magic, just fun stuff. I probably wouldn't have done it in front of a, an adult audience, but I would do little magic tricks for the kids. And I saw something on TV one day and I thought, oh, I'm going to inflict that on the children. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and when I looked into it, I wonder how that was done. And it turned out it was hypnosis. And from there, life hasn't, you know, been the same. That was 2010. So it's, 14, 15 years ago now. Um, and I just went on a few, you know, short in, uh, trainings. Uh, mm -hmm. People like James Tripp, you might know. Yep. Uh, just to, to learn the basics of hypnosis, two days here, two days there. And I thought, well, I need to practice this. Now, I always tell people, if you're learning to juggle, for instance, you can go into the kitchen, nobody's about, you grab two oranges and an apple, and you juggle, you drop something, you put it back in the bowl. Nobody, <laughs> wonder how, wonder how those apples got bruised. But um, you know, but for hypnosis, you need to work with people. Yes. And I, you know, so went out in the streets of Belfast, and just started hypnotizing people with with their permission. I always add, you know, stuck their feet to the floor, did some fun stuff, uh, made them forget their name, entertainment wise, and it was only through that. The people, um, you know, I had no intentions of going down the, the hypnotherapy route. Mm. Uh, I just, just doing this as a hobby and as an interest. And like most people, again, I'm sure there's some people watching this, thinking about coming to the com uh, conference, and they're thinking that they, they, they don't have any experience in hypnosis at all. And like me, you know, like them, you know, I was saying, oh, this isn't real. This doesn't really work. People are just playing along, you know. You need to do this stuff to realize, God, this are we allowed to swear? This shit really works. We're allowed to say yeah, that. Absolutely. No, um, it might absolutely. be an edit in there. <laughs> no, no, but, not at all. Specific, historic, something thought. Uh, we'd find a word for the eye. That's yeah. it. But, uh, you know, so I really, and, and people would come up to me and say, here, you just made him forget his name. Can you make me forget I smoke? And, and at that stage, I hadn't done any of the more therapeutic trainings, but I thought, well, one's as good as the other. And I just did it and it worked. You I know. think I remember a video of you doing, I think it was the Swan in Indeed. the Belfast Shopping Centre. Is that right? Well, that was actually... Oh, well, it might a, have been Belfast, but it was definitely a shopping yeah, centre. Yeah, it, it was, it was um, just I said Belfast. Oh, the names forgot me now. Inspire Business Centre out in Dundonald. Uh, it was actually, you know, I had a stand there. I was doing, I was mm, doing, yeah, I remember that, actually. 
you know, and I remember the look of wonder. And actually, that's what I love when you, when clients leave and they come out of hypnosis and the look of wonder on their face. That's it's it. just, it's, it's that's just it. pure amazing. It's priceless. So, so that 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 that's my background, and that's how I got into now. So, so um, I gave up the engineering world in 2016 to become full time uh, hypnotherapist. So that's what I do now, full time. And can I actually because. And there's a very specific reason that I'm raising it, actually, right? I know it's connected to your talk, right? But you'll also get, and I get this quite a lot, and I might have even thought this way myself until I went to the States and I started to have these more open conversations with Americans. But the value of street hypnosis and the value of stage for the therapy business, because you've just Indeed. described exactly how it works, but so many people don't think like that. They think it denigrates it. They think it... it well, that's it. So, so, so as part of, as part of um, doing this fun stuff, just as a hobby, um, well, I actually taught my son as well how to, how to hypnotize people. And it was him that created a YouTube channel back in 2013. Right. Um, and he put a couple of videos up and then said, there you go, run with it. So I managed to, so I've now got about 1.4 million views. There's over 700 videos up there now. But, you know, when I went to, Come 2016, when I said, right, I'm going to do this seriously, you know, working with anxieties, depression, people said, well, you'll need to take that fun stuff off because people, you won't want to see that there. And and I didn't, you know, I was proud of what I'd done and proud of what I can show off. Uh, and there is some therapeutic videos up there as well, but um, it has helped me. And again, just, just before we hit record, we were talking briefly about working with children, you know, especially when working with kids. So what will I tell little Johnny, you know, that he's going to come along and see you? I says, just show him the fun stuff. Show him there's just a, a, it's a, it's a fun thing. It's a happy thing. Um, and, and that, that's a great benefit. And that's why I don't know, want to segue straight into to what I'm talking about. So I'm talking about, you know, high street hypnosis can help your therapy practice. I feel it's been a great advantage. Um, for instance, you know, when you're starting to learn, as I was when I, back in the I was starting, I just thought, well, how am I going to learn? Can't go into the kitchen on my own, hypnotize on orange. I have to go out and find a, a human being, uh, someone with a brain to hypnotize. And so I just went out. And if, you know, did I get it right first time? Well, I will say the very first time was perfect. But, you know, two or three in, I started to make mistakes because it was, starting to get that confidence and then trying yeah. extra things. But I made mistakes, but I made mistakes without impacting someone's anxiety, without impacting someone's depression or impacting someone's want to stop smoking. If I got it wrong, somebody's feet didn't stick to the floor. Yes. And I learned from that as to how I needed to recover, how I needed to change things, how I needed to change the tools and techniques I was using to get it right. And whether you're, uh, you know, this is the reason we have apprentices for bricklayers, for 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 any hairdressers, for anything in life. You know, nobody's going to get it right first time. You're know, even even you know, school of dentistry. You you've got students in there. You need to go to a qualified dentistry. You go to school of dentistry. Um, you know, and they'll be under supervision. But you'll get you'll you'll learn to play around with it and understand the best way to do things. And and so many people I talk to, you know. It, that have went to just a standard hypnotherapy training haven't just went out and had fun with it yeah. in what we'll call, you know, even in engineering days, you call it a sandbox, you know, an area where you can just play and, and, and try out new things, try a new induction you've learned, try a new deepener you've learned. Um, and that's really at the core of what I want to get across is street hypnosis has a value it's not to demean it, but it's, it's uh, the things I've learned from street hypnosis. I haven't heard from, I've obviously went back from a therapeutic point of view and done a lot of trainings. And men, uh, many of the things I learned myself or learned through, you know, doing entertaining uh, hypnosis through other people, I've never heard in, in the hypnotherapy context. And those things add so much value. So that's what I want to try and get across to the audience that there is a value in just doing it. You don't have to pay. I mean, I, I got to the stage where people were paying me to yes. do street hypnosis. Street hypnosis traditionally is you go out in the streets of Belfast, just do it for free, for fun. And that's yes. what I was doing. That's how I learned. But I got to the stage where people said, here, can you come and not do a stage thing, but just come along and just do some impromptu street hypnosis at my birthday party or at this event or at this 
uh, council event and, um, you know, I started to charge for it. I'm not saying you have to do street hypnosis and you have to get to the stage where you're making money out of it. Doing it just just to play around and understand really how street how, how hypnosis as a, as a, as a thing works. And so, is it that it when people see you do the, the hypnosis on the street that they realize the power and then they attach it to something that they have, i.e., anxiety, i.e., smoking, i.e., whatever it is. Yeah, the, f- the first two things I did was stop smoking and then and, and insomnia, and it was purely because people had seen me doing do that. So if you can make him forget his name, if you can make him his feet stick to the floor so he cannot move from the spot, then you can help me with X. Absolutely. Whatever it is with my depression, my worries, my insomnia. Um, but it's it's not just about being that convincer for prospective clients. It's also what you learn as a hypnotist, as a hypnotherapist. And that's what I was actually going to say to you because I remember the first conversation I had in the States and I can't remember who I had it with, but it was someone who had kind of a, a who, who was, a, it was staged more so than street, but, but the similar type of vein. Yeah. That you kind of learn so much confidence. You learn what works, what doesn't work. You learn to read people. You learn to so much stuff that is of use in the therapy room as a therapist because so many different type of clients come in. Yeah. That not the one standard approach isn't going to work with everybody. That's it. And, and, and what's, what's a lot wonderful about, you know, learning street hypnosis as a hypnotherapist is still, you'll probably want to do maybe a, a little talk at a woman's institute or, you know, a, a networking event, right? You'll still want to do something in front of a group. And so many people go in and just tell you how wonderful the mind is. And that's it. I do a demonstration. If I go anywhere as, you know, with, with the Inspire Business Center, I, you know, did a demo. And people see, right, so this is not just something to talk about, but he actually can do it there and then. Absolutely. And the most therapists will do light arm, heavy arm, or magnetic hands or magnetic fingers as to show the people the power of their mind, even in their that's own it. therapy room. You that's know, it. Is it so, too much different? No, that's it. It's, it's exactly, you know, and again, a lot of my talks going to be almost just pointing out how, it's, how there's so much overlap between the two. But the, the gaining the differences from understanding street hypnosis and learning street hypnosis just gives you that age. Not an age, I mean, we'll, we'll get you more clients, but that, that age to just be that better hypnotist, hypnotherapist. Does it give you more confidence, Troy? Definitely, definitely. It, um, it, it's, it, you know, and like I say, I, for instance, I, would, I was at a networking event. Uh, and, and if you're familiar with networking events, you know, not on you, but I know you are, yeah. but for you, people watching this video, you know, you go around the table and somebody stands up and says, right, I'm an accountant and I can do your books and I can help you with this. And somebody stands up and I'm a HR expert and I can help you with employment contracts. And then I stand up and, and say, I'm a hypothes- hypotherapist. I can help you with anxieties and whatever. And and when I stood up, someone said, so can you hypnotize me now? Now, because that's the very first thing I ever did. Yeah. I said without a blink of the eye, yeah, do you want to be hypnotized now? Now, at that moment, they went, oh, not now, right? Okay, a lot of people think hypnosis is spooky or just they were, they were taken off. But I had, I just, yeah, I can do it. I didn't, yeah. I, I it, it was beyond, I'll say, the confidence. I just, I had, I had that confidence to say, yeah, do you, want, do you want me to show you now? That's... At which point they backed off and they didn't do it. But <laughs> but that won me the room. Him yes, of course. That in that moment. He said, yeah, I can do it now. As opposed to, mm, well, maybe not now. Why don't you book in at two o'clock? Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're in a watching. quiet room and nobody's watching, we'll do it. But I had that concept. Yeah, let's do it now. In front of everybody, let's do it. Well, I, w- I want to tell a little story. And you, I don't know whether you know this story or not. Um, but Dylan Lovegrove did the stage hypnosis at the conference in April. Yeah. And one of the things that I've always been impressed with is pure confidence. Not only do you have to know how to hypnotize, not only do you have to be able to read people, but you have to be confident. And you have yeah, obviously, yeah. you know, you have knowing hypnotherapy then as well helps if there's any reactions that might go askew or whatever. Indeed. But and it was a really fun. It was it was a mad, mad fun evening. But there was one particular point where the microphone didn't work. And he was given a new microphone and then that didn't work. And then he was given another, and, and this was going on for about 10 minutes, but the confidence of Dylan to keep going all the yep. way through was absolute. Most of us would not have had that level of confidence. It was just, yeah. And particularly in front of a room of about 120 hypnotists, because that's who was in the room. 
exactly. You know, exactly. I mean, it was it was that, and and it's that in that confidence that he builds into you. Is that's I think it. The thing that impresses me the most. Yeah, and again, that's one of the almost moving into my present. Day, but you know, one of the one of the skills of um, street hypnosis is that ability. I'm going out. To, I might say right. I'm going out this Saturday to Belfast to just stand and say, hey, would you like to be hypnotized? Would you like to be entertained for five minutes? I have no idea what that person's going to say. They might say, clear your way off. They might say, yes, let's give it a go. Uh, let's assume they say, yes, let's give it a go. I don't know how they're going to be react, how they're going to be respond, what they're going to do. So, you know, that's at the heart of hypnotherapy is you don't know what's going to happen when a client Absolutely. comes in. You, you, you know, and this idea of, you know, and, and, and I know Carl's a big part of the conference this year and, and, and you know, it's, it's about no scripts. Um, I'm not a Bible fan for no scripts. Scripts have a, a you know something in there. I don't use the scripts either, but but the, it's the street hypnosis confidence to know right. I I have three or four different avenues. Whatever happens, I can go down this way, this way, or this way, and having that confidence, and and people pick up on that. You know, if you walk up and say hi, I uh, I'm doing some uh, street hypnosis today, and 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 would you um uh, would you um would you like to be hypnotized? People say no. no thank you very much. <laughs> you know, so so just to walk up to someone, a stranger, you know, they haven't booked last week to come and see you, so they've no idea you're there in town today. They have no idea that you're, they're going to be stopped, um, but they do know they have ten minutes to spare. So it's, yeah, let's give it a go. And 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 to me, doing street hypnosis and hypnotizing someone, you know, I'm I'm not taken away from stage or therapy but with therapy someone's going to ring today and next week right. for the next seven days they're going to go oh, expecting i'm going to try and I, you know, i'm going to be hypnotized next week i'm going to be hypnotized next week that in itself is an element of hypnosis they're, they're, they're already programmed their mind oh i'm going to get i'm going to stop smoking next week i'm going to see taran oh uh or if they book a stage you know show for friday night right on friday night i think i'll just watch this time or maybe i'll stand up and go there's they're already thinking about the hypnosis and that from the moment they see the ad or make the yeah. booking absolutely yeah whereas whereas to bump into someone and they weren't expecting it and within five minutes they're in trance and and they can't move their feet yeah if you know you have really the confidence powerful. to do that they are that is that to me is the ultimate you know really uh, powerful i've done it on the streets of las vegas it is actually great fun. indeed brilliant yeah, so it's it's awesome. Dublin, it's yeah. video. that's it <laughs> um, yeah no it really is great fun but it does it gives it really does build in confidence. Absolutely. That's it. And do, are you going to get it right first time? No. no but, but that's the whole thing. But you, you'll never get it right if you skip out that, that, that you know, playing around with it. Isn't that that little NLP you know. piece of guidance? Failure is only, there's no such thing as failure. It's only, only feedback. feedback. That's it. That's it. Do you know, um, so obviously we've covered your talk in full because we've got it. And I'm looking forward to loads of people's feet being stuck to the floor around the hotel that weekend. Indeed, it's indeed. Fun. Well, that's it. Uh, what what I love is after after I've done my talk, you know, um, and it's not just because of me. Because you know, when you're at the conferences, conventions, it, it, this always happens. That the the, the 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 good crack is just in the bar in the evening, uh, with with unsuspecting visitors at the hotel. <laughs> that's exactly it. So it is about the fun. It's about the connections. It's just, and it's about. Taking those skills that they learn from you and from various other presenters and just being able to apply them there and then. That's it. That's it. And the, I mean, and then the other piece of advice I want to just say in general about the, uh, any conference is, you know, I, I'm just, there's General Joe from up the road in Northern Ireland, you know, wherever they come, wherever the speakers are coming from, you know, because I know a lot of the speakers that, that are there, we're, we're, we're not gods. No, you know, absolutely. We just heard really and and me. you know, we all learned it from someone else, and then they all learned it from someone else. It's, it's the ancient Egypt's Egyptians and Chinese that started all this, you know, stuff. So nothing's new, and we're not gods. So just you know, come up and speak to us. Absolutely, have a conversation. I, you know, I'm just reminded of of a comment. Do you, I don't know if you remember Gary Player, the golfer. Yeah, yeah. A long time ago now, mind you, many people wouldn't. But that's it. It's just right. age, but he had this wonderful expression. When someone told him, you know, he, he was he was very lucky on a golf course or something, and he went, and the more I practice, the luckier I get. That's it. So, it. you know, all that street hypnosis stuff really does, it, it really yeah. does improve your, 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 your skills. 
Um, but everybody is open. That's what these conferences are about. Most therapists work on their own. That's where this conference exists. Exactly. That's why, they, again, again, it's, it's, it's that opportunity to get that community spirit to meet other people and realize, oh, you'll just live down the road. Especially, yes. I mean, this, this is, I mean, I've been to, to the conventions in America. I've been to the conventions in London. Uh, it, it's, I mean, I, I take my hat off to you. Um, show my bald head in the process. Uh, <laughs> and um, we're not alone. Um, oh, absolutely not. And, and uh, you know, the, the, this, is on, this is on my doorstep. Just delighted, delighted to be sharing. Well, it's and, London where I got the idea in the first place. I kind of went, okay. Yeah. Why don't I do that at home? Well done. Well done. Take, take um, my so, yeah. no, it's there. And the, the whole idea is for people to connect, for community to be developed, and for people to be more aware of hypnosis. So as a yes. community, we can expand. We all know the power it is to help people change. Yeah. Um. You know, I where I work sometimes, and this is one of my big bones of contention, I see people going to a therapist week in, week out, week in, week out, and you just bang your head. Anyway, that's, that's, sorry, there's four to five, just, yeah. you know, it depends, but like a couple of sessions later and they're leaving a hypnotherapist and their issue's done and they'll tell me that. Exactly, exactly. That's so, it. People, see, people say, I'll tell you, yeah. I've been, been to therapy for two years and bang, they've got more success yeah. in one or two So our job really is to get it more out there so that people don't yeah. have to go through that process. So I'm know? really hoping that, that, that you know, that, that this, that's a major goal. It is just the communications of hypnosis and hypnotherapy as you know as a topic, and, and, and because we all know everybody goes Ooh, spooky hypnosis, Ooh, you know. Um, there's so many misconceptions. Thank you very much, Hollywood. I won't, won't Hollywood, you. yeah, absolutely, yeah, you know. But uh, yeah, it's more oh, so so breaking that and and educating that, and again, street hypnosis does that. You yeah, know, because people are aware they can hear your voice. Their feet may be stuck to the floor, but they can hear everything you're telling them. And they go, oh, so I didn't know. know it's not like that. Maybe I'll try yeah. it for some therapy. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Tran, I can't wait to see you in Dublin. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a wonderful couple of days. And everybody should go see Turan's presentation because then you can practice sticking people's hands to the counter and feet to the floor and mouths together and whatever else later you on. Will, you will day. come to my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, thank you, Turan, and to everybody watching this. Um, we all look forward to seeing Turan in Dublin on the 5th and 6th of April. And to wherever you are and wherever in the world you're watching this, I wish you an absolutely wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.